casualty list. He's missing because of a virus. David Robertson, too, is injured, and Charlie Miller suspended. So there are places for Gary Bolin, Neil Murray, and John Brown, who starts a match for only the sixth time this season. Now 33, he still demonstrates an appetite for the play in a variety of positions which serves his club so well. The referee this afternoon, Mr. Bobby Tate from East Kilbride. So Rangers start the match playing down the Easter Road slope and instantly it's apparent that some alterations have been made in that Alan McLaren is in a midfield role for Rangers and it looks as though he's marking Michael O'Neill who's in the centre of midfield for Hibbs. Walter Smith there huddled in the front row of the director's box against the Cove. Headed away by Hunter. And Stuart McCall with a deflection there. Good effort there. It's been deflected for a corner kick. Jim Layton happy to see that over the top. So an early opportunity from the set piece for Rangers. Trevor Stephen lining up an in swinger. Alan McLaren on the goal line for Rangers beside Jury. Goff thinking runs the near post. Swept away there by O'Neill. That's well controlled by McCall. Goff wants to play it back to Moore. Possession now for Kevin McAllister. Well, he was body checked there on the run. And free kick goes to Hibbs. Stephen Tweed has made his way forward for Hibbs. Well, that's unusual to send the big centre half up for a free kick taken this deep. Keith Wright did well. This is Tweed. Tackled strongly there by Daniel Bolly. Wearing gloves there against the bitterly cold wind. Tweed took a hefty knock there. There's no ill will between the players. Fair tackle there by Bolly. Hibbs too, opting for the in-swinger, taken by Joe Tortellano. That goes Hunter attacking the ball, then in by Jackson. Uh, some hopeful appeals there from the Hibbs players for the handball decision, I think, but certainly not a decision they expected, I'm sure. McCall lets it run for the goal kick. Good experience play there by Stuart McCall. Good play by O'Neill. Involving Hunter. Bolly quickly to the ball against Wright. Awkwardness for Tweed. Under pressure from Judy. He hit the post. Splendid effort there from Gordon Judy. Jim Layton is I right about the fact that the whistle didn't go for a free kick. And that's a very good shot taking the volley by Judy. Coming right off the upright. Well left there. Yeah, Mitchell. That's Judy playing it wide. Here's Brown. Thought they were heading that first time. Do they believe they might have enough room to collect the ball? Jackson's back here, here's O'Neill. Good turn of pace. Chased there by McLaren. Still O'Neill. An excellent goalkeeping there by Maxwell. Well, O'Neill appeared to be impeded there by McLaren, but he kept on his feet. And had he gone down, there must have been a real appeal for a penalty. Well, Michael O'Neill not at all happy here. Now there he is, he's being held back all the way by McLaren. Then he was caught, stumbled. And that allowed Maxwell to make the dive at the feet. Good turn of pace though for Michael O'Neill. Now Stephen dropping very deep here. Brought down by Keith Wright, clumsy tackle. Well, Trevor Stephen adds that extra dimension to the Rangers attack. He has that free roll off Gordon Jury, which is difficult to pick up. 
Taking a free kick himself. McLaren in the box, so is Bolly, so is Goff. And so was Stephen Tweed for Hibbs. He concedes the corner. Well, packed penalty box for this corner, taken by John Brown. A shot from Bolland. Well, that appeared to be deflected. No chance of the referee or, in fairness, the linesman seeing that, though. Well driven corner kick that by John Brown. A bit of bumping and barging in there, in the middle of the area. There was Bolland. It was deflected, all right. And you'll see that better, I think, from this angle as the ball breaks out to Gary Bolland. Shot, change direction. There's McLaren. Now they're away by Tweed, straight to Travis Stephen. That's for John Brown, he's onside. Jim Leighton made a very good save there, he's angled absolutely right because Brown tried to steer that beyond them to the far post. You see how deliberate John Brown was there. Jury's headed layoff, that's Gary Bolland. Only Stephen to the middle of the Rangers. Jury brings it down and strikes out very cleanly towards goal. The Hibs players were convinced that it was handball by Jury. But he struck this very well indeed when he got the referee's decision his way. Brown available again in the left touch line. Well, Rangers defending a men like Trevor Stephen, a little bit of extra invention in the absence of loud drop in particular. Craig Moore. Driving outside Mitchell. Needs some help inside. There's Jury taking up good position. Now Stephen. Jury. Great save from Leighton. That was terrific goalkeeping. Gordon Jury knows that. Well, 56 years old, but still sharp, going down his left very swiftly to that excellent shot from Jury. His judgment there by Moore, that was Jackson. Back with O'Neill. Now McAllister, the quiet first half. Now Miller. Hustled there by Brown. Did well in the end, Miller. Keith Wright goes down, flashing there with Richard Goff. The hip supporters looking for a penalty kick. And the Rangers fans behind the goal clearly believing it right to the dive. Goff looks in, passive. Well, very interesting indeed, this challenge. There was a little bit of wrestling. Wright trying to get across there, not much in that. There's Murray, now Moore. Across with Goff. Now Bolin. Flatters a done pass. Gary Bolin full strike here. Well, he does have a very powerful finish in that left foot normally, but the ball popped up on him at the last moment. And that meant he couldn't control it. You see it here. Just pops up in front of him as he goes and hit it. So Leighton's goal kick brings the frantic first half to an end. It really was a very impressive exhibition of goalkeeping and Jim Leighton keeping Gordon Jury at bay with one outstanding save shortly before half time. And the upright also coming to Leighton's rescue early in the match again. That contest with Gordon Jury, a fascinating one. Half time, it's Hibernian nil, Rangers now. So Hibbs playing their favourite way in the second half down the famous Easter Road slope. They have also the benefit of the wind as far as attempts on goal are concerned. Clearly stirred by Jim Layton getting some wind assistance, taking it well into the Rangers half. Both these sides struggling a little bit recently. Hibbs winning only one of the last six league matches. That's why they've lost touch with Rangers at the top of the league. John two lost three in the three defeats against Hearts, Barrett, Thistle and Falkirk. Matches which they were expected to do better in. Rangers on the other hand lost their last two away games. At Aberdeen in the league and against Hearts in the Tennant Scottish Cup. So, both sides anxious to get right back on the rails. 
Rangers with a very big cushion at the top of the Premier League, but still very keen to keep the gap at full stretch. And for Hibs, it's the battle for Europe, realistically, that matters for them. Still in the cup, of course, but they are behind Motherwell at the top of the league, and in third place, the the second. Chance, though, to do something about that today with Motherwell Idol. So Mitchell plays it long, too long for Michael O'Neill. So no, instantly obvious changes in the tactics employed by both sides in the first half. Bowling. Steven offering himself short. On the far side is Moore. And intended to put that back to Bolly, I think. O'Neill. Back with Mitchell. Now Tweed. The Clarion wins that for Rangers. There's Brown. Now Steven. Money. Good build up play. Judy on the right. Tackled there by Tweed at long range. Out for Murray, that's McLaren. Murray's fast, but that's a shade too fast for McLaren. He'll get a grip of the shot the way he wanted. There's Murray, rolling it back. Yeah, John Gregg on the left, and Ali McCoy's half hidden there by the stanchion. Enjoying the match, apparently. Free kick against Judy. Here's Graham Mitchell. Goff winning that battle of the air against Keith Wright. Judy's layoff, McLaren quickly to the ball. That's Trevor Stephen. Murray kept it in play for Judy. A bit of wrestling there by Judy. Wow. There's no infringement given there. Here's Judy. Still good play by Judy and Rangers have scored it the goal. Excellent play on the right by Jordan Judy Amore. It did appear to get a refereeing decision in his favor against Graham Mitchell. Jim Layton racing out of his goal is being booked for his protest. The referee takes. The shoot for goal scores his fourth goal of the season. 13 minutes into the second half. But there was Judy. Now, did he wrestle his way past Mitchell? That's what upset him. And after that, his play was terrific here. And he went to the byline and teed that up for McCall. Well, here was Judy coming in on Gordon Hunter. Mitchell was out of position by this time. Hunter sold himself rather. And McCall right inside the six yard box. The call to Judy. The call again. Now Bolin. Ian Ferguson well forward here on the left for Rangers. Well tackled by Miller. Well, a very dangerous decision taken there by Willie Miller. He clearly thought it should be a goal kick. But the referee giving the corner kick instantly as Ian Ferguson was tackled by Miller. The Rangers supporters wet and happy at this stage. That's John Brown. Finally got a touch. Murray back to McCall. Good effort! Well, Stuart McCall, not too prolific a goal scorer. That's him with four this season so far, and this was close. Taking a service here from Neil Murray. Under pressure from O'Neill, and it was very close indeed. As Willie Miller. Jackson, go back. Well, that obviously. John Brown ran it well for Rangers. That's gone. I'm a call. Fergus not going to come up. 
Garth to Maxwell's left foot. Here's Darren Jackson. Basham McGraw. Willie Miller supporting on the right. It's a good cross. The header from Keith Wright. The equaliser for Hibbs. A superb cross for Willie Miller. What a beautifully directed header. Jackson holding off ball and Willie Miller sending in the out swinging cross. Keith Wright getting up so well to that to guide the ball beyond. Ali Maxwell, the great cross from Miller. Look how well Wright gets up to this between two defenders, between Bolly and McLaren. Superb equaliser. Keith Wright racing across the bows of Richard Goff. Now Jackson again. In goes Costolano. And Maxwell recovered well there. The Rangers defender not happy with Tortellano, but the ball was loose. He got a very good header on target here. Heading out towards goal, Maxwell fumbled, and in went Tortellano. Durant, I think, in two minds there. Still managed to keep the ball in play. So now into stoppage time. There's not much of that as Leighton launches the ball downfield. In fact, there's none at all. The game ends in a draw. It was fiercely fought right from the start. Both sides determined to earn a victory. Stuart McCall seemed to have done that for Rangers with his excellent goal in 58 minutes. But Keith Wright came back with his fifth goal of the season with an excellent header to give Hibbs a point, which looked unlikely for long spells in the match. In the end, it's Hibernian 1, Rangers 1. You had Gordon Jury leading an attack with Trevor Stephen, his main support. Were you happy with, it, with the way that worked out? Well, from Trevor's point of view, he is a midfield player and everybody knows that and they get caught in the deeper areas um, and involved. But I thought overall our play was good. It's as well as we've played at Easter Road for uh, a number of games. And, uh, you know, really we restricted Hibs to very, very few opportunities to, to score until they get a little lift when they scored near the end of the game. With John Brown to way in the left, that was a big contrast from the normal wing play you've had Peter House earlier in the season and then uh, Brian Loudrop. Were you satisfied with the way that worked out as well? Well, I mean, that's what we've got at the present moment. The 13 players that we had, or the 13 we had available, we've got no more after that. We were into apprentices. So um, I felt that uh, overall, you know, after putting the team together um, in that manner, uh, I was happy with the way we played. And we could do a bit more on the last third of the pitch in terms of, um, you know, maybe dribbling, crossing, and taking a few opportunities. But once we get our players back, um, that'll come back to us. Uh, when it was going to be a tough game, Rangers played five in midfield, and it sort of caused us problems. Uh, but I think the second half, we really got into the game. Uh, we had a few chances, we managed to take one. I uh, suppose a, a draw would be a fair result. What about your goalkeeper in the first half, Jim Layton? Uh, he's been like that all season, tremendous. He uh, just gets better and better. And he's an hour, two or three great saves today. And as I say, it's been like Jim all year. From the Hibs' point of view, though, the league race, I think, generally speaking, is, is out of reach a bit. But for the European place, is that a major factor for the Hibs players right now? Uh, that's what we're going for. If we can't uh, finish first in the league, we want to get second and get that European spot. That's Smotherwell, two games in hand now, but uh, it's, going to, it's going to go right to the last game of the season with three points for a win. It's going to be some battle with Celtic, Celtic and Hearts will fancy themselves as well, but uh, hopefully we'll finish second. One other route, of course, to Europe is through the Cup. How do you feel about the Stennis Muir game coming up? Very tricky game next week. They've proved that with St John's and Aberdeen and Terry Christie will have them organised. We've got to go there and do a professional job. It'll be a hard game, uh, but hopefully that'll be a great chance to get in the last four. Derek, let me pick up firstly on something Walter Smith said there, quite remarkable I find. That was the only 13 fit players he had. This is a club with over 50 signed professionals, only 13 available. I think he's, he's possibly got a pool of about 20 though, in the first team pool, he had six internationals today, they're out injured. So that's all that was left with, with the two goalkeepers and the, and the 13 players. And that's, that's all he's got to go with. It's been like that all season for him. Mm. But he doesn't complain. He knows he's just got to get on with the game. Sure. And bearing that in mind, Tony, I suppose a point's not a bad result, for really for both clubs, I suppose, at the end of the day. Yeah, I think so. Rangers will be very disappointed being out of the Scottish Cup, uh, but they want to get some continuity back in, in the league programme because they want to keep their fans going to the end of the season. Mm. Derek, the first Rangers, uh, the first Rangers, the first goal, the Rangers goal, uh, a lot of controversy yeah. about it. How did you see it? Well, I think watching it for, for the first time, I mean, and that's all you get, first impressions, the same as the referee. I thought it was a free kick. I mean, Gordon Jury 
Uh, two hands on Graham Mitchell there to get by. But he's right, as soon as he gets by him, the head was up, he gets to the byline, hammers it across, and really Stuart McCall, who for me has been outstanding this season for Rangers, she's got on the end of it. You know, we slow it down. Look, he's just been obstructed, I think, by Willie. Uh, Graham Mitchell. The, the yeah. two hands that are on him there. For me, that is a foul. There's no doubt about that. He got away with that. But uh, once he got by the player, that's good play, getting to the byline. As soon as you get the byline, cut it back. It's very, very difficult for defenders, and that's a great goal by Stuart. Yeah. Tony, would you go along with that, that it shouldn't have been allowed? Yeah, I think Graham uh, Mitchell cut across him, but I thought the linesman could have played a much more active part in that because uh, the referee could have been obscured uh, his vision, but the referee, the linesman was only two or three yards from the incident, and if he thought it was a foul, he should have put his flag up to bring the referee's attention. Certainly. No argument, though, about the Hibs goal. Well made, well taken, but maybe questions over the Rangers' defence, Derek? Well, it was their first effort on goal for Hibs, really, and I mean, Rangers had played well defensively, but it was their best move. It was a great ball in there from Willie Miller. And we stop it there. Look, we see Richard Goff there at the near post. We've got Basil Bolly, and we've got Alan McLaren. Three of them there, three players, three central defenders that are supposed to mark. And there they've left one player, Keith Wright there, and doesn't he punish them for that? I mean, that's a great header. Ali Maxwell has no chance with that, but defensively, I think Walter will be disappointed. So many back there in the box, one man there, and he's not marked, and they're great punished for it. Ball, though, well, it's a great yeah. ball in, but mm. you've still got to mark tightly inside the box. Mm. And uh, they were punished severely for that. Mm. The thing that maybe disappoints me a little, Tony, is that's the, the first team in the country and the third place team in the country, and it wasn't a wonderful game, was it? It wasn't really a great showcase for, for the Premier Division. No, it wasn't. Uh, I think we have to accept the weather conditions today were terrible at sure. uh, Easter Road. I mean, I was at Fir Hill today and the game was abandoned, so I think throughout Scotland the conditions were poor. Uh, but both sets of players gave plenty of endeavour, and I think that our old Rangers dominated most of the game. For the last 20 minutes, uh, Hibs made it a contest, and in actual fact could have won the game in the last couple of minutes. OK, for the moment, fellas, thanks very much indeed. Let's uh, now take a look at the rest of the day's matches, those unaffected by the weather, that is. Only 11 matches got underway in Scotland today. Only nine were to finish after the games at Firhill and Stay.